co-host of the First Draft Podcast. Todd, 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 Todd. Todd, your latest mock draft Ooh. just dropped this morning. You still have Bryce Young, all five foot ten of them, 204 <laughs> pounds soaking wet, bricks in his pockets, going first Bye. to the Colts. What are teams saying about his measurables? The only the only concern with with Bryce Young is the measurables, and and it's it's different. Like we've seen quarterbacks come in at, at just over 200, 205, 210 pounds, but he at two hundred and four pounds would actually be the slightest quarterback drafted in the first round, going back to two thousand and six when we started tracking this. So there's a concern. There's no question. If you're if you're not going to draft Bryce Young. It's because you're worried about the durability. It's not the height anymore. He, he knows how to maneuver in the pocket. He knows how to find passing windows. It's that slender frame. And if you've ever stood next to him and, and like, you know, shaking his hand and, and just look at him versus like a Kyler Murray who has similar, you know, similar stature, Kyler is thick and built and, and looks like he could last. With Bryce Young, you worry about that. But other than that, and, and you heard it on the clip before, it, to me, he's got a lot of the Patrick Mahomes in him. Just so poised, understands where the pressure's coming from. He knows how to elude pressure. He's always looking down the field, and, and he just has magic to his game. And so I, I think he's the best quarterback in the class. I would gamble on him, but I've talked to some general managers in the league that say, you know what, I need my quarterback to last 17 weeks and I'm worried about him lasting 17 weeks. Todd, Todd, you've been covering this stuff a long time, and the 17-week thing is real. Big quarterbacks, there's a reason. Yeah. The NF, the, there's a reason the NFL is a big man's game. With that being said, though, is there somebody out there that's linked to Bryce Young, much like Cliff Kingsbury was with Kyler Murray because Cliff Kingsbury drafted Kyler Murray. The Arizona Cardinals didn't draft right. Kyler Murray. They now, now they're kind of stuck with him, but that was a Cliff Kingsbury decision, so to speak. Is there somebody out there that, that when you look at Bryce Young that they, you could point to and say he'll, he, he believes in him? I, I, I can't specifically say, to be honest. I, I'd love to give you a name. I think Indianapolis, Chris Ballard, the general manager, he's tried the veteran route over and over and over again, and it's failed. And he's put together a pretty good roster around him. They, they're they just looking for a difference maker at that, at that position. And it's also going to be interesting. Like, where's Lamar Jackson going? You know, what's we, we just saw that Derek Carr is, is, you know, just signed with the Saints. You're talking about uh, possibly Aaron Rodgers going to the New York Jets. So, there's going to be a lot of movement in the next week or so with some of these quarterbacks. But, uh, but I think Indianapolis, Houston at two, obviously, Indianapolis at four, and then I think Vegas sitting there back at seven is pro are probably the three teams that are most interested in him. Todd McShay, ESPN NFL draft analyst, co-host of the First Draft Podcast, joining us here on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. Todd, obviously the Jalen Carter situation is ongoing it's fluid uh what have, what is the latest that you've been hearing from people around the combine regarding Jalen Carter well no one wants to talk about it right like mm. I've talked to probably six seven teams and everyone's like well we just have to wait and see we have he I'm telling you Jalen Carter when he's right when he's healthy he's the best football player in this draft and I'm including the quarterbacks he's he's that impactful but there were character questions coming in. I had mentioned them. Dog Nation got all over me. They, you know, I, I took it for about 10 days, and then this incident happened. And, and obviously a tragic, horrible incident. And, and now you add what teams were already concerned about a little bit and add this to the mix. I dropped him to number 12, but I, I legitimately still think he could be a number number, you know, top three, four, five pick, as long as everything works out legally between now and, and April's draft. Todd, I have C.J. Stroud on my top five list of quarterbacks. You know, C.J. Stroud, obviously, Richardson there, Levitz, uh, Bryce Young, and then Hooker because of the ACL injury. W where does C.J. Yeah. Stroud fall in the mix of these quarterbacks based on his 
uh, combine results? I forget the combine. To me, just go off the tape. And, and I think the, the best tape that he has is the final tape, and it was in a loss to Georgia. Because what every scout has wanted to see, Key, is will he utilize his mobility? Because he has mobility. And he, he tried so hard for so long to just be a pocket passer and stay within the structure of the offense. But when push came to shove and he had to sit there for a month and listen to how, you know, every doubter coming off the loss to Michigan and how he, he's not utilizing his, his mobility, I, I think he just decided, you know what, enough's enough. And if you can get that C.J. Stroud that you saw against Georgia, you're going to get a special player because he can kill you from inside the pocket, processes quickly. He, he can make every throw. I go back to that Utah Bowl game, the Rose Bowl, uh, a year ago. And some of the throws he made without his two, two uh, first-round draft picks at wide receiver and just, just the dots that he was throwing and, and putting the ball perfectly placed, he can do it all from inside the pocket. It's a question of does he want to be more mobile and create and when the initial play breaks down. And, you know, when you get in the NFL, it's not going to be as pretty as it is when you're sitting in Ohio State playing Illinois and Indiana and <laughs> Purdue, you know, it, it's going to be a whole different world. So I, I think that was promising and probably the best thing that could have happened to him. I think he's the number two quarterback. I have him going number two uh, to Houston, assuming Bryce Young goes number one if a team trades up like Indianapolis or maybe Houston trades up. But regardless, I think it's, it's going to go Bryce Young one, and it's going to go C.J. Stroud, too. And then we'll get into the defensive players like Will Anderson, the, the defensive end from Alabama. What teams do you see that – or is there a team outside of those two teams that you just made mention that you could see making a move in trading up in the draft to land one of these top-tier quarterbacks? I think the Raiders – you have to consider the Raiders, right? They're sitting at seven. And Carolina at nine. You know, what, what's their long-term answer? So I, I think those are the four teams, you know, Houston, Indianapolis, Vegas, and, and Carolina are the four teams that I see inside the top ten that could be jockeying around to figure out which, which guy. And you guys know, like, yeah, I, I, like, I like all four of these quarterbacks. I see the positives. I see the negatives. But you fall in love with one guy. And if you fall in love with one guy, you're, you're going to give up a lot to go get him. And that's why Chicago is in an unbelievably good situation. I, I had in this last mock draft, Chicago moving back to four with Indianapolis and then moving back again so that a team like Vegas or, or Carolina could come up and, and get that spot. So Chicago could wind up getting a, a, just a, an absolute haul of draft picks. What does the haul look the like, Todd? You're in at number one. Todd, before we let well, you go, what does that you hall, know, if you move back twice, what does that hall look like? Well, if you move back to four, I think it's kind of going to be pick 35, which is what uh, Indianapolis has, and then probably a, a fourth or a fifth round pick. And then if you move back again, you're probably getting a, a second or a third and a fourth. So you're talking, you know, five picks in, a, in, in the first four rounds in addition to what they already have. Right. So two, a high second, a mid second, say, and then maybe a third and a fourth for that number right. one overall right. pick. Is that considered really good value for the number one overall pick? Absolutely. I mean, listen, I, I, I love Will Anderson, but I, I would it, – it's a numbers game to me. I, quantity over, over quality, really. I would much rather have – four or five picks than just have one pick and gamble on one guy. We, I mean, how many busts do we see? It's like a 50-50 proposition in the first round. So if, if you're giving me four or five picks in the first four rounds, I'd, I'd take taken. that over just taking one player. Yeah. Todd McShane, and, and ladies unless, and Unless yep. I needed a quarterback. Unless right, I right. needed a quarterback and, and I had – you know, an Andrew Luck type of guy, Trevor Lawrence, like that kind of quarterback there. Unless I need a quarterback, I'm moving back and I'm getting as many picks as I can. Plus, they also will have, what, three picks, three or four picks in the first four rounds. So you're and talking even, now seven picks. 
And it's, it's, it's like kind of how the Jets have, have built things in the last couple of years. Yeah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.